Take a look at this remarkable reaction. A single oxygen atom is added to an alkene, replacing the pi bond with the three-membered ring. As I've implied here, this reaction takes place with syn addition. Both carbon-oxygen bonds are made to the same face of the double bond. The products are known as epoxides. These are defined as compounds that have a three-membered ring, two carbons, and one oxygen. And take a careful look at the reagent. This is not a carboxylic acid. It's a per acid. Carboxylic acids have two oxygen in the functional group. This has three. Take a look at the structure. You may be familiar with carboxylic acids themselves, a carbon that has a carbonyl and a hydroxyl group attached to it. The structure I show here is acetic acid, and I've chosen this one because its per acid is commonly used for epoxidation. Per acids have an extra oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen. If we draw out the atoms, we would commonly draw it, as I've shown it on the left. But I've drawn the structure on the right for a specific reason. This oxygen-oxygen bond is particularly weak. And that's the reason this functional group is willing to give up an oxygen atom to make epoxides. In addition to per acetic acid, which I've shown here, other per acids are used as well. One very common one that's used is called metachloral per benzoic acid. The name is a real mouthful, and it's often abbreviated as MCPBA. In any case, a variety of per acids will transform alkenes into epoxides. And now that we know more about the actual functional group, let's take a look at the reaction mechanism. When the pi bond of an alkene reacts with a per acid, the pi electrons are used to form a bond with an oxygen. This oxygen right here. When that happens, a bond must be broken, this weak oxygen-oxygen bond. That can only happen if these pi electrons leave. They're used to form a bond with the hydrogen, which frees up a pair of electrons to make the other sigma bond with carbon. Now, if this set of arrows is enough to make you go cross-eyed, don't get too uptight. I don't expect that anybody will ever ask you to draw this mechanism like this. I'm showing you so you understand why this molecule gives up an oxygen and epoxides are formed. But I don't think it's something you have to memorize. What you do need to know, however, is that per acids transform alkenes into epoxides, and the reaction is stereospecific. Here's an example. When this alkene, which has a Z stereochemistry, is treated with a per acid, the epoxide is made and the relationship between the alkyl groups attached to the alkene remains unchanged. In the starting material, this ethyl group and methyl group are on the same side of the double bond, and they remain on the same side of the ring in the epoxide. When we start with the E stereochemistry, the ethyl group and methyl are on opposite sides of the double bond, and they end up on opposite sides of the ring in the product. This reaction is stereospecific, because the stereochemistry of the alkene dictates the stereochemistry of the product. Just to be complete, I should mention that in each case, I've written only one enantiomer as being formed, but the other enantiomer is formed as well. So the top reaction forms both the SR and RS pair of enantiomers, and the bottom reaction forms the RR and SS pair of enantiomers. The fact remains that of four possibilities, only two stereoisomers are formed which means the reaction is stereospecific. When we want epoxides having a certain stereochemistry, we'll have to pay particular attention that we start with the right alkene. So to summarize, alkenes are transformed into epoxides, the reaction is stereoselective, it proceeds with syn addition, and the reaction is stereospecific. The stereochemical relationships of 1, 2, and 3, and 4 attached to the two alkene carbons remain the same with respect to the ring of the epoxide. And finally, let me show you why epoxides get so much attention. They're extremely useful in synthesis. This graphic shows you nine different structures that can be made from epoxides. And these are just some of them. The ones I show are the ones that fit in the context of the chemistry I'm covering in these videos. I don't intend to talk about the specific reactions themselves, transforming epoxides into these structures. I'll do that in a separate video but I just want you to be impressed by how many structural types can be accessed through the epoxide.
and epoxides can be accessed through alkenes. So the synthetic process of alkenes to epoxides to other structures is a common one. And of the ones you see here, two are particularly worth pointing out. The transformation of epoxides into diols is particularly important commercially. Industrially, this reaction is used to make very large amounts of diols. The other one I want to point out is this one. This is very special because it makes a carbon-carbon bond. Reactions that make carbon-carbon bonds let us build bigger molecules from smaller ones. And in this particular case, it lets us build molecules with control of stereochemistry. I'll talk more about this reaction and the others you see on the screen in other videos.